Okay, so we're going to cover using the web of science as a database for searching literature. We'll cover briefly some ways of searching for literature with some of the search terms or the keywords you might want to use and combinations and how to use those. And then finally, we'll just look at some ways of um, collating the information from the web of science into files which you can then use and manage to gather information for your research dissertations. So going from the Bangor University Library webpage, I'm going to go from the Web of Science link here. And that'll take us straight to Web of Science. There we go. And we can see here we have our basic search term box. So before we add in our search terms, let's just have a quick recap on some of the search terms. Um, well, variations that you can use. So Web of Science have a really useful help page which break down information into digestible chunks. So I do recommend that you use that if you need to troubleshoot or find out something for yourself. But in the, today's tutorial, remember we use these Boolean search operators and that's using these capitalised words of AND, NOT and OR. So if we have, say, um, a couple of search terms or keywords separated by the word and, then what this enables us to do is find literature which contains all the terms separated by that operator. When we use or, this will allow us to find records containing any of the terms separated by the operator. And then finally, if you want to exclude anything, you can use this um, word not between your search terms or keywords and that will exclude the records containing certain words from your search. So a good example of using the not is maybe you're wanting to look at the causes of marine mammal strandings and you're interested in looking at chemical pollution influence rather than sonar. So in this example you would maybe put as a basic example marine mammal strandings not sonar. And here we have some really nice uh, information on how to put together your keywords with these Boolean operators. And I think this is a really nice example here, which I'm highlighting. So in brackets here, we've got copper or lead, followed by the word and algae. So what this does is it finds all the records which the word algae, so that's the and algae section, is present. And that will be combined with either the terms copper or lead. So it'll find algae and lead or algae and copper. Here we have a star after the word gill. So this allows us to find literature which contains the word gill and any expansion or variations from that. So in this example it will find literature that says gill or gills. You might find that in some instances there'll be variations in maybe how terminology is used in a particular field. So I think here is a nice example. So we've got a honeybee example. So honeybee can be written as two separate words, as a whole word, or it'll be referred to as a particular species. So separating these terms with the word or allows us to find all these variations so that your search for literature is not excluding anything important. And again, we've got these stars after these words, which will enable you to find variations, so honeybees um, or honeybee, for example. And an extra example of that um, star use is on dance. So as you know, honeybees have this wonderful um, dance that they do, and it can be referred to as dance, dances, or dancing. So DNC with the star at the end allows us to incorporate all those variations of the word dance. So you should have a play with these different terms and combinations until you find something that works for you. Okay, so we're gonna put some of this into practice now. So I'm going to use the term 
uh, microplastic because there's quite a few variations in which microplastic occurs. So I'm going to put in brackets. Uh, first of all, we've got microplastic, and it can be microplastic or microplastics. So we put a star there to incorporate that. Oh, I can't spell. Let's put that back to plastic. And we're going to put or. Sorry, my previous searches are coming up automatically, which is a bit distracting. So we're going to go microplastic. It's a whole word or microplastic separated by a dash. Again, with the star, so it's microplastics included. Okay. So let's look at that first of all. So we're looking at microplastic as a whole word or microplastic separated by a dash. And you can see that gives us straight away 1,369 hits. Okay. So that's quite a few. And just looking at some of these titles. I'm getting a feeling that some of these might not be relevant to me as a marine biologist, I'm interested in the marine sector. So I'm going to go back now and refine my search. So here I'm going to add something along the lines of seawater marine. So we're going to add and, so we want to combine it with other terms. And here we can see it got coming up automatically marine or seawater. So we're going to search that again. And you can now see that this is reduced already down to 433 literature items. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep hold of that. So the first thing that we want to do is save this list somehow. And there's various ways we can do that. You can export it into an email. So something to be careful with before you export it. If you look, at, look down the list, what have we got here? We've got... 50 items here, so you can expand that or reduce it, but 50 is the maximum that you can get on the page. But we have obviously more than 50 items, we've got 433. So this is something you have to be careful with is, um, sorry, let's get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, so we're gonna email it. So rather than just selecting the records on this particular page, which is the default um, option, we're gonna click on records and we're going to include all the records in that list. So we're going to go from the first one to the last one, 433. So that will send us a complete list. So you can send that to yourself. <clears throat> so I'm going to send that to my email address in Bangor. There we go. And this is really important. We need to have good traceability on the terms that we're using and when we searched and where we searched because in this field it's quite important, microplastics is a rapidly expanding field. So I'm going to put the source, so it's Web of Science. I'm going to put the date. So today is the 6th of December 2016. And then I'm going to follow that with the search terms that I've used in this example. So we've got microplastic as a whole word. Um, no, I don't know why it keeps coming up. Um, or microplastic by star and marine or seawater. Okay, so whatever you have here should match here on your search terms, and you can send that because it's quite a long list, this will take a little while to send. Great, so that's been sent. And that will just come up in your email list, which you can copy and paste into a Word document if you want. So now I'm going to find another format to send this on. So again, the default is on all records on the page. We want all those records coming up. That ping you heard, that's the email coming through, so it's been sent. So I'm going to go make sure we include all 433. And I'm going to save it as a HTML file. Send. So that was pretty quick. So I can see on the download list now, this is the list of my literature files with the abstracts. So you can download that onto a memory stick or your personal information accounts 
uh, wherever you want to store it. But another form which I'm interested in today is looking at EndNote online. So if you haven't got a, an account with EndNote, EndNote is basically software which allows you to manage uh, your literature and you can actually save the PDF files on there as well so it's really useful and when you get more familiar with it as you progress with using Word documentation you can actually use it to automatically cite your references um, so it's very useful. So you can get, uh, you can, if you're a Banking University student you'll be able to have a free uh, EndNote online account with the university so you might have to register that's very easy and intuitive uh, so I'm already logged in to EndNote, I think, but it's the same procedure here. We have to make sure that all those records are going across and not just the first 50 that appear on your first page. So I'm going to send that now. So this can be a little bit slow. I think it's actually probably my internet connection. It's not particularly great here. So if you do have slow internet like I do at home, then do consider doing this somewhere with faster connection to speed it up for yourself. Okay, so they've been sent. So I'm now going to go to my EndNote database. And there we go. So that's my list there. So I can see that 433 have gone up, they're on file, I haven't done anything with them yet, and they're all here. So you can get links to these papers directly if you want to. This one's not a good example. Let's go further down here. Let's look at this one. Okay, so this is good. So within this file here, uh, you can see, you can look up, you've got various links that you can go to which will take you directly to the, to the full text file if you wanted to go to it. And you should be able to do it um, from these links here as well for each one, given the option. So there's, it's very useful having all this information collated, collated here with these links for you. You can see that you've got the abstract as well. Sometimes the abstract doesn't appear, so you may have to um, seek the, uh, the actual paper itself on the, the link of the websites to get to the abstract, but most of the time you should have the abstract. So some people will, if they're restricting their um, literature through types of criteria, they may look at the title alone, but most people will have a quick look through the abstract, and make a decision based on that whether it should be included or not according to their um, criteria. Okay, so that's those files there. Now, we can actually group these folders up. What I tend to do is if I'm searching for a literature under certain criteria, or using certain, using certain search terms, I will have a folder containing all the original found literature before I start sorting them out. So I'm going to try and select all of these. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh no, I'm back on Web of Science. I apologise. So let's go back onto EndNote. Sorry, it's, it's quite late here at the moment. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I'm going to sort these all out now. So I'm going to select all those files. And I'm going to 
group them up. So I'm going to put them into a new group. I'm going to give this group a similar name to the note that I made on my um, Web of Science export list. So I'm going to put Web of Science for short there. The date I searched, so that's the 6th of December 2016. And my search terms. So again, this was micro plastic star or microplastic star and marine or seawater. So I'll click on that. So it's thinking, you see this little dotted circle going. And there we go. So that's my record there. So that's really good because then you've got, if you need to go back to your original list because maybe you've been a bit too harsh in your criteria selections, then at least you've got um, a list that you can go back to and work from again. Okay, so you can also list them into groups. So maybe you want to look at particular um, examples where plastics have impacted animals for example um, or something else so okay harmful, okay yeah we'll work with the impact on animals so that one looks like it's um, one on animals obviously I'm just basing this on the titles at the moment but you'll do something more thorough when you when you do this yourself um, maybe that has something I'm not too sure um, and definitely that one okay so those three I'm gonna create a new group for so I can put uh, impacts on marine fauna and there we are so we've got that group there so if you as you add more literature to this you can add them to these different groups uh, it just allow helps you to sort of focus focus them down you can also search uh, within your database for different terms as well there's a lot of flexibility with this so you just have a play around to get familiar with it um, now, you may find that you end up adding more and more searches from your web of science, so it means you duplicate some papers. So how would you deal with that? Well, first of all, let's duplicate some papers. So I'm going to save some more files to EndNote. So I'm just going to pick the first. Um, why isn't that me doing anything? OK. So inline records. I'm just going to pick the first 20, for example, from this database. So this is the one that we've already uploaded. So I'm going to duplicate the first 20 papers up to EndNote just to show you how to deal with that. So it's quite slow. Okay, so that's sent. To end note, I'm just going to refresh that page so that we can get those extra 20. So remember, we had 433 originally, and we can now see we've got 453. So we've got those uh, extra 20. So the extra 20 haven't been filed, so we know they're there, So because it, it tells me here. And we can maybe find some examples. So there we go. So we've got one example here Anderson JC in 2016, it's duplicated here. So rather than painstakingly going through every page trying to look for duplications we can just simply go to the organized tab at the top here we can go to find duplicates and there we go so this has very helpfully listed straight away the 20 duplicates that we have and it's very helpfully also Sele um, selected in advance the ones that have been duplicated so all you have to do so you can see we've got the tick on the duplicates I'm just going to press delete and it will delete those duplicates for you very handy so you now can see on your reference list here we're back to 433 which is our original number so we've successfully removed those 20 duplicates And again, just have a play around, get familiar with the system. You can organise things by title, by the year in ascending or descending order, by the author, 
it's it's a really nice database but again you won't learn anything unless you just be a bit brave and just do a bit of trial and error and have a play around to get familiar with it so that's it for now um i hope that you choose to use endnote or similar um software like it like RefWorks, for example, maybe you use, use something else that you, you prefer to use, that's fine. The point is, I'm just giving you a tool to use to help collate your information for uh, your search le literature with traceability on the terminology, the terms and combinations of words that you've been using, uh, along with the dates, because these are really important information um, to collate and keep track of uh, when you're kind of incorporating these kind of partly systematic approaches to um, literature searching. So I'll say good luck and good night and uh, I'll probably post up some more videos, uh, video tutorials like this in future um, if you have any more questions about how to use these systems. Okay, thank you.